Hey guys, Pete here from Crunch Time Coaching. Today we're going to have a master class on beginning forehands and backhands. And the cool thing about this video is you can do this practice session completely 100% on your own. All you need is a tennis racket and some tennis balls and some determination. And I'm going to show you how you can start to build your forehands and your backhands step by step. Let's get right into this video. First of all, I can see my buddy right here, B2. You don't know who B2 is if this is the first time you're watching my channel, but he loves to go chase some tennis balls. So there he is right there. Did you see him? He'll be coming back in the camera. There he is. So if you like, if you like puppies, give this dog a uh, give this dog a like. Give this dog and this video a like. And let's start with the forehand. Okay, the first thing that we want to focus on is the grip. And we want to be doing the latest and the greatest. So most of the pros hit in a semi-western grip. What is that? Well, let me show you. It's really, really easy to find. So if you've never played tennis before, the first time you go to hit a forehand, what I want you to do is just drop your racket on the ground, pick up the racket like this, like a frying pan, okay? And this is going to put you in this semi-western grip. Now, just by doing this, you have a super advanced grip that's going to allow you to do lots of cool things. It's going to allow you to hit top spin and top spin allows you to swing as fast as you want and the ball still will go in it's going to put a spin on the ball that carries it over the net and brings it down into the court so the semi-western grip is what most of the pros are using today and that's how you find it so that's the first thing you want to do is get your grip now what i don't want you to do i'm sure you're watching a lot of videos right now on youtube trying to figure out this game what I don't want you to do is worry about a unit turn when you first go out to the court. I think this messes people up. There's too much to do. And when you watch a really good teaching pro hit the ball, you're like, wow, that looks really simple. So people are going to teach you, okay, let's get in that unit turn. The step one is you get here. Step two is you get here. Step three is you drop and then you swing. That's too much stuff going on, okay? Whenever you want to learn something new, you have to reverse engineer it. I'm taking a Rick Macy term. You probably don't know who Rick Macy is, but he coached the Williams sisters and lots of other great players. But he talks about reverse engineering, and I completely agree. It's the same style I like to teach in. You gotta start from basically the end and work your way back. If you're trying to do all of this, right, that's gonna be too much for you to do. And you're gonna be skying balls, you're gonna have trouble finding the contact point. The most important thing in tennis when you're hitting a ball is how you contact it and the angle that your racket head hits the ball. So if your racket head is a little off one way or the other, you're going to hit, either hit the ball down the net or you're going to hit the ball into the sky, especially if you're doing this big swing. So the first thing you want to start with on our forehand, on our backhand, is actually the contact point. So what I want you to do is you have your grip and just put the racket out to the side and we're going to be in a full open stance right here. You see that? So we're just here and then what I want you to do is start to feel your hip here. Okay, because another thing people do is they, they arm the ball too much. Actually, we want all our swings initiated with our hip on the hitting side. So on the forehand, I want to initiate this hip and start to push. On the backhand, it's going to be this hip and push. That's all we need to do. So we're going to get here and we're just going to put the ball in front of us and start to feel the hip push. And no swing, no fall through. Just drop the ball and push. And just by doing that, as long as you have the right grip and you're coming a little bit beneath the ball, have your hand also beneath the ball and then push the hip, you're already hitting the ball tossing. You're going to notice that your ball is going to be rotating over the net. I'm going to put the uh, camera in the back and do a couple of those so you can see that the ball already has some spin on it, some rotation. I'm not even swinging. A lot of people think you need to swing really hard too to put toss spin on the ball, and that's just not true. So watch this, guys. Watch how easy tennis can be. I'm here. I have my semi-western grip. What I don't want to do is any tweaking. I don't want to, I don't want to move my hand up and open. I basically want to keep my hand in the same position and just get beneath the ball a little bit and push my hip at it. And you can see that that ball has some rotation. Notice that the ball is going up and down. So it's basically here and just boom. Here, boom, that's it. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add one of those really cool follow-throughs that you see the pros do. So I'm gonna move the camera back around and we're gonna add the next move 
into our forehand. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my hand here. Again, I'm staying completely open. That means my legs are basically just facing towards the camera here. I'm focusing on the hip move, and I'm gonna be here, and I'm gonna push, and then I'm going to fall through over my shoulder, basically gonna relax the racket right there, right on top of the shoulder, and have the strings face out towards the side fence. See that? So watch this. I'm gonna push and then relax over the shoulder. Already that's looking pretty good. Let's try that again. Let me get another tennis ball here. I'm gonna get here, I'm gonna push forward and over the shoulder. Now once you start to feel that, I like to start to really incorporate the non dominant hand because it's going to add a little more easy power and control over the tennis ball. So now what I want you to do is, is think about working these two together to where you're going to push and then follow through and catch the racket. So we're going to come here, push, fall through, catch the racket. See how nice that looks already? So your first couple times out, I don't even want you to focus on the unit turn in here and up and down. That's going to mess up your stroke. What I do want you to do is start to also work on your footwork patterns. What I've been hitting in is an open stance. I've been here and I've been going like this and hitting. But I also want you to learn how to step into a ball as well. So you would start in an open stance, drop the ball and then step to it too. So you can do both motions and that's really all I want you to do. Another thing I, I want you to do too is to be in the short court. Okay, just be in the short court right here. Don't go all the way back to the baseline your first time out. Just get here, make everything super manageable and really perfect that technique. All right, let's move on over to the backhand. We're gonna start with the one-handed backhand, then I'm gonna teach you how to do the two-handed backhand, and then you'll have a perfect start, a perfect template to go out with to have a nice forehand and backhand. And when you go out there and you start rounding with your friends and you don't think about right away how to do this big unit turn, that will come later, but you're just here, getting the racket here, right at the contact point and just hitting, you're gonna to start to look awesome right away. You're gonna to start to look pretty advanced and you're gonna hit the ball clean with topspin and everybody's gonna go, wow, where did you learn that? And you gotta tell them, hey, you learned it on the internet, on YouTube, crunch time coaching, a cool dog named B2 loves to hang out in his little dog house and you give this video a like and you subscribe. All right, let's go to the back end. Okay, so now let's move over to the backhand. The backhand, in the beginning, there's lots of decisions to be made. There's lots of very important decisions to be made because there's a couple different ways to hit a backhand. Number one is you can have a one-hand topspin backhand. You can have a two-handed topspin backhand. You can have a one-handed slice shot. So what should you choose? Well, here's a couple different ways for you to help for you to decide. Number one, if you feel like you have strength issues, which a lot of people just feel like it's tough to really control the ball with one hand, then that top hand can be a miracle worker for you and give you all kinds of control over the ball. That's why when you watch even the pros play, most of the professional tennis players have a two-hand backhand, okay? But that doesn't mean that you should necessarily have a two-hand backhand because some of you are gonna feel tight and constricted and nasty when you hold it with two hands. That's how I feel now, and I had a two-hander growing up. So if you feel tight, if you feel like your range of motion is limited, then the one-hander might feel a lot more free, but it can be a more complicated animal to conquer, okay? So when you have that one-hand one hand backhand, it's pretty important right away to start to develop a chip shot and then a topspin ball. And I would even argue it's more important to develop a chip shot first because at least you'll be able to handle every single level of the ball. So the ball comes high, lots of people on a one hand, especially when you're starting out, don't feel any control up here, but you can learn how to chip a ball up high. If the ball is super low, again, 
people have trouble with the toss spin figuring out how to do that but you can chip a ball and then if the ball is at the waist you can still chip a ball pretty comfortable so you can just do more in the beginning stages with a one-hand chip so if you want to go out there and rally with your friends a one-hand chip or slice this is what I'm talking about it might be more important to focus on your one-hand slice first but you also do want to be working on your top spin because that can give you a little more offense and it feels cool and it looks awesome and certainly once you watch TV and you're going to see Stan Wawrinka hit a backhand or Sissy Poss or Federer uh, when you see these players hit their one hand back and you're gonna want to hit top spin, okay? Okay, so let's get into learning the top spin back in. First thing so important is the grip. You have to have the motorcycle grip. What I like to do is just basically treat my racket as a handlebar and then put my knuckles on top. We want to spread the fingers out too. That's important. You don't want to be super tight and like a fist. You want to spread it out, okay? but you want those knuckles on top. Again, that's gonna allow you to have spin on the ball. And what you wanna do is start open, put your racket here, toss the ball in front of it, and then grab it by the throat. Grab the racket by the throat, and then push until your arm can't extend anymore out. And already just doing that, you're gonna look pretty good. Remember, you push your hip at the ball and you follow through. This, it's important to be close here too because if you go back to the baseline, you're not going to feel much strength and you're not going to be hitting the ball very far, very hard. It's going to be discouraging. But if you stand up here and just focus on pushing this hip a little bit out, you can start to feel that control right away. Now, I do think on a one-hander, it's super important to step into the ball. So after you feel comfortable with that hitting open, you want to learn how to add a step into the ball okay so we're here again we're starting right on the contact it's very important not to open up the hand but to start just below the ball and come up in this rolling type fashion rolling and out see that watch a super slow motion out and now we're going to step into the ball as well so we're going to come here we're going to put the ball out there now we step towards it and follow through we'll put the rack the, the camera in the back so you can take a look at some of those Notice too how I bring this hand back for counterbalance. So my hitting hand is going to finish high and my non-dominant hand finishes low. Now again, our first day out, we want to keep our first couple times out, we want to keep everything super simple. So that's all I want you to do. And remember, I'm telling you to stand close, okay? So if you go all the way back to the baseline, you're not following my directions. All right, now the next thing we want to do is start to learn how to hit a slice on the backhand. And the reason why you want to do this is if you have a one-hander, again, you can learn how to handle high balls and mid-range balls and low balls, all with the chip shot. What you want to do is first of all have the correct grip. Now the grip is kind of almost the opposite. Remember how I said when we we're going to hit topspin, we want the knuckles right there we want to hit. This is another mistake that people make is they try and have the same grip for both topspin and slice and they just, can't, they just can't hit good shots. So with the slice, what we want to do is we want to go into the continental grip. The continental grip, the way you find it is, see here, I'm going to take the webbing in my hand here and I'm going to run it down the racket and grab it okay lots of people will call this the shake hands position feel like you're shaking hands with the racket and now what we want to do is start to think about hitting the ball with the bottom edge of our racket meaning that we want that bottom edge to be leading to the ball and tossing it's the opposite the top edge is kind of dominating leading towards the ball on slice the bottom edge is doing that so the rack face is going to be open slightly and what I want you to think about is not hitting a lot of spin on the ball. That's another thing that people try and do because they might watch TV and they start to see this ball going low and skidding through the court and they hear the word slice and you start to think about chopping. This is going to mess up your slice backhand. What you want to think, especially in the beginning, and if you want to rally with people, it's more of a punching motion, especially when we're going to start from the contact point. So, 
If you can learn how to do this, you can also volley the ball very well. Volley is when you take the ball in the air. So the way I like to teach people how to a slice backhand is to have them volley their backhand. So what we're going to do since we're alone here and practicing today is we're going to put the ball on the ground, let it bounce, and we're going to think about blocking the ball forward, hitting a volley off the bounce. And again, especially when you start rallying people, this is going to be easy to kind of figure out how to rally people is kind of punch the ball back and forth on the slice. So we're here. We want to really think about holding the racket here by the throat. This is called the throat of the racket with your non-dominant hand setting yourself up and putting the racket butt out slightly this way. You don't want it here or here. Then you're not going to have power. Okay. So if you hold the racket like this, you're not going to have much power. You start to kick the racket butt out like that that's going to give you some power. So even without a backswing, remember we're starting pretty much from the contact point. We want to kick that racket butt out like that. And when we see the ball come, we want to set up here and then we want to punch out there. So we want to come from here and then out there and hit it pretty square. We want to think about hitting the ball pretty square with the, the edge slightly leading the way. You don't want to exaggerate that because then the ball will pop up and open. So what you want to do is you want to be here and then you want to think about punching through the ball pretty solidly. Okay, we'll try that again. I'm going to be right here holding the racket. I want to think about punching the ball. And the more you add this back hip into it, okay, if you're just thinking about the arms and the shoulders and doing this, especially the elbows, you're not going to hit a good solid shot. But if you think about just punching but really pushing this hip at it, pushing this hip at the ball, you can get a pretty solid hit on the ball. Okay? So that's how you chip the ball. Now finally, let's teach if you have a two-handed backhand. The first thing I want you to do is actually get really good with your non-dominant hand. So put the ball in, I put the ball, put the racket in your non-dominant hand here. And remember our semi-western grip. I think that's a really good grip to have. So you can drop the racket, pick it up, and now start to practice some off-handed forehands so you can start to develop that non-dominant, because that's going to, that's a game changer. Once you get good with your non-dominant hand, you can start to handle high balls with the two hands. You can get down low and kind of do some cool things, hit some great passing shots, things like that. So get good with this right away and you might not have ever really thought about using your non-dominant hand athletically, so this might be really new and feel weird to you, but the more you can get here and just do what we did before, just remember pushing the hip, pushing the hip, and going like that, and doing that a couple times, right? Doing that a couple times, boom, out there, and then what you want to do, remember that follow through that we taught you on the other side here, and then follow through over the shoulder. And then all you got to do, the thing that's kind of cool about a two-hander is it has more flexibility in, your, in the grip, okay? You don't have to have, it's not a one-size-fits-all. Like I think the top spin back in, you really got to put those knuckles on top. Now you can have them on top for the two-hander. That might give you almost too much spin. You might feel a little tighter there. So you can kind of play around with moving your knuckles here and there and here and there. The more you move your knuckles down there, it's going to open up the frame and you'll be able to hit the ball flatter and watch out for the ball of the sky on you because you might open up too much and it skies. And the more you put your knuckles on the top, you're going to get a lot of spin, but you might feel very tight when you do that. So find what is best for you with your bottom uh, hand here where you're going to put your, your knuckles and think about, again, pushing with this top hand and letting the bottom hand kind of go along for the ride. So we'll just hit one of those because I'm almost out of balls here. So this game here just right through and there you go. There's your beginner forehand and backhand lesson. Hopefully you love this video. If you love this video, then give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about tennis. All the people who follow me are totally obsessed with tennis. I call them totally obsessed tennis players. So if you're obsessed with tennis, make sure you subscribe to this channel because you're going to love it. And you know, one of the toughest things to learn in tennis is the serve. So I want to give you a free serve course right now called Serving A to Z. Click up here in the card section. That's just that little I up there. Click on that or go in the description box 
Get your free serve course, there's 33 videos and why it's called Serving A to Z is for people just like you, just starting out and you want to learn how to hit to serve the right way, you want to get your toss under control, you want to learn how to start to hit spin on the ball, so slice serves, kick serves, it's all in there. If you want to hit a serve 100 miles an hour, get my free Serving A to Z course because I teach you how to add power to your serve as well. So go up there, go in the description box, like the video, subscribe. All right, I've asked for enough. We'll see you guys in the next video.